A beam of light takes one year to travel 10 trillion kilometers. So 40 trillion kilometers is four light years from home. It's crazy. Distances so vast, they're almost beyond comprehension. And exciting. Who knows what strange worlds lie ahead? What we'll discover when? If we reach the edge of the universe. Ten light years from Earth, the star Epsilon Eridani. What spectacular rings of dust and ice. And somewhere in there, planets forming out of the debris, being born before our eyes. Asteroids and comets everywhere. We could almost be looking at our own solar system billions of years ago, with comets delivering organic molecules, water to these young planets, kick-starting life just as they may have done on Earth. At the center of all this action, a star smaller than our sun. It's still in its infancy. Any life in this solar system would be primitive at best. There must be more mature, developed solar systems out here. But finding them is like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Twenty light years from Earth. Star Gliese 581. It's about the same age as our sun. And orbiting it, this planet. It's just the right distance from its sun. Any closer and water would boil away. Any further and it would freeze. Ideal conditions for life to have evolved. And if comets have struck, delivering water and organic materials, then life, complex beings like us, even civilizations like our own, could be down there right now. And if there are, even at this distance, they could be tuning into our TV signals, watching shows from 20 years ago. And here's your host, Joe Dutton. But until future generations can find a way of communicating over these vast distances, all we can do is speculate. Us and them, living parallel lives, unaware of each other's existence. Unless life has been and gone. They're creators and destroyers. As the dinosaurs found out the hard way 65 million years ago. This is the needle in the cosmic haystack. The closest we've come to a habitable solar system like our own. But it's a chance encounter. There could be hundreds, millions more solar systems like this out here. Or none at all. This is vast. And look, it's the planet Bellerophon.
so close to its own sun, it's a miracle it was discovered at all. Problem is, from Earth, we can't see planets this far out. They're obscured by the brilliance of their neighboring stars. But the planets have a minute gravitational pull on those stars. Measure these tiny movements trillions of kilometers away, and we can prove they exist. That's how we tracked down Bellerophon in the 1990s. Opening the floodgates to the discovery of hundreds of other distant planets. <laughs> 65 light years from Earth. Tune in on this bright star and you'd pick up TV signals from Hitler's Berlin Olympics. <laughs> Twin stars. It's Algol, the demon star, feared since ancient times on account of its sinister behavior. From Earth, it appears to blink as one star passes in front of the other. Up close, it's even stranger. One star has expanded into the gravitational pull of the other. It's being sucked towards it. Almost a hundred light years from home. Listen. One of the first ever radio broadcasts. Just a faint whisper. We appreciate it if anyone hearing this broadcast would communicate with us. We are very anxious to know how far the broadcast has reached. And then silence. From here on out, it's as if Earth never existed. Any aliens living beyond here will have no idea we're there. It feels like a lifetime ago we stood on that beach, looking up at the sky, wondering where and how we fitted in. It's time to appreciate the wonders we're seeing, not just for what they tell us about our own world, it's what they can tell us about the whole universe, its past, and its future. Deep inside our galaxy, the Milky Way, a vast celestial library, each star a book with a story to tell. It's all here, waiting for us to lift the cover. The Seven Sisters, daughters of the ancient Greek god Atlas, transformed into stars to comfort their father as he held the heavens on his shoulders. And this giant, Betelgeuse. The brightest, biggest star we've seen so far. It's got to be at least 600 times wider than our own sun. But this, it's not a star. Not a planet. Not like anything we've ever seen. A ghostly spectre, more than 1,300